Hello, and welcome to the World Healing Tour podcast, where our mission is to help you heal yourself so you can heal the world. Hi, my name is Noah Crane. Each week, we will bring you tips and tools and inspire you to live your most empowered and joyful life. I'm also the founder of the 3G Effect, a daily practice to keep you heart-centered in everything you do by having a positive mindset and a positive attitude. When you're, when you're in a place of being grateful, you are connecting more to positive emotions and positive feelings, and therefore drawing them into your life. It puts you in a more positive place, more of a place of flow, a place where you're moving forward. You're not stuck because you're grateful. You're thankful for everything in your life. So being in the present moment is so important for our own well-being and happiness. So what are you grateful for in this moment? Know that your life is abundant. You have everything that you need right now. And when you're grateful, you will have more of those things in your life. So we, to, in order to have that, we have to be happy with who we are and what we are already. So take a moment every day to have a grateful heart. Number two, every day remember to ground in love and compassion. First, love and compassion for yourself. Make sure that you learn to love yourself, accept yourself, forgive yourself, that inner work for yourself is so important for your own success in life. You have to believe in you first. And to stay grounded, when you're grounded, you're unshakable, right? Nobody can take you off your track. You really know who you are and what you want. So make sure you work on yourself. Make yourself your biggest project every single day. Then make sure you also share that love and compassion with others because everybody wants more love and compassion, right? So why aren't we freely giving it out to everyone? We should all be sharing that love and compassion. I truly believe when we give out more love and compassion, we receive an abundance of love and compassion in return. And element number three, make sure you know every day that you are guided by God. So whatever it is for you, whether it's universe, higher power, source, energy, whatever you call, whatever you call your inner power or the power that guides you in your life. For me, I call it God. So I'm going to talk in terms of God because God created you. And I believe that God's inside you. You're a part of God. God's beside you. God's all around you. You have to open your heart and soul to God. You have to learn to listen to God, to, to be open to the guidance that God is giving your way. God will send messages and messengers in such mysterious ways that maybe nobody can understand but you because God wants to guide you. He wants to show you how to do better in your life. And so when we're open to that guidance, when we realize that we are not alone on this journey, it unfolds everything for us in a completely different way. Take time every day to thank God and to ask God for support on your journey. And I promise you that God will listen. By, do, by practicing the 3G effect every single day, it has completely transformed and changed my life. And that's why I'm so excited to share it with you. It has brought miracles in my life. I've been able to manifest my soulmate and create really positive things in my life and bring positive people into my life. And I want that for you as well. And the best of all is those three things are completely free. They don't cost you anything. So remember, every day, one more time, have a grateful heart, ground in love and compassion, and know that you are guided by God. Well, today I'm really excited because we're speaking about a very important topic, and that's the topic of personal development, right? To be able to develop ourselves, to be the best version of ourselves. And I'm very excited about my guest, Michael Angelo Hamilton. He's only 24 years old, Generation Z entrepreneur already, right? And he does, and he's a personal development enthusiast. Michael is also the 2024 candidate for Florida 91st House District. I'm so excited to have him and share his journey with you. Welcome to the World Healing Tour podcast, Michael. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Noah. Uh, I always, um, Love your events and everything that you do. So I'm really excited about talking here today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for coming here today. So Michael, I wanted to ask you, how did your journey 
start where you started, because it's very interesting to me, you're 24 years old, you're running for Congress, right, which is yeah. a huge achievement. You know, how did you get interested in that? Was it something happened in your life that got you interested in running for Congress? That's a good question. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, so I would say, like, you know, really started when I was really young. Um, I remember, like, always wanting to watch the TV, always wanting to learn new things. I was interested in meteorology and weather growing up and was always thinking about my future in life. And um, when I saw, you know, the history that happened in 2008 with um, the first African-American or person of color to be president, um, it really expanded my mindset. And I said, hmm, maybe this is something I can do one day for myself. And and not only that, but help people along the way and, and to be involved in leadership. I, I didn't know that was a career choice all the way when you're young or eight years old. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I started with that. And, um, you know, I kind of continued on with my professional journey, like during, you know, school, you know, um, I graduated with um, a high school diploma with honors. I was always a really smart person <laughs> growing up. So, you know, um, I'm always been like a mover and shaker. I'm, I'm, I'm like the mover and shaker in my household, and I like to get things done, and that's what I hopefully will have the privilege to do here for our district here in the city of Boca Raton and, and uh, Highland Beach, and hopefully maybe one day have the privilege to serve in Congress. I love that. You told me some story that when you were young that you were watching with a bunch of kids. Can you tell us that? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a wonderful story. I love I love explaining that story. So um, it was 2008. I was in my um, high school, and um, we had, like, um, the presidential inauguration happening. So um, we had, like, a TV roll in. Like, our teacher was like, oh, Michelangelo, all, all the classmates, like, you know, um, we have to watch this. You know, it's history. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. Look, all those people. And um, it was really, really interesting to me. And then I'm like looking at my friends and classmates. I'm like, oh, look. And they're like sleeping. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, so that's when, like, looking back from today at 24, looking all the way back, I'm like, this is what I'm meant to do. That's amazing to have an insight that early in life that you want to make a difference in the world. Why are you so passionate about making a difference in the world? Well, that's, an, that's a really important topic. I feel like uh, making a difference and, and changing people's lives and, and serving others is really, really important. Um, we're all Americans. We're all humans at first. And right now, you know, politically speaking, like our, our politics is so divided. And, and um, I get along with everyone. I get along with Republicans, Democrats. I work with people in business who are Republicans, and we get along really well. And, and you know, so you know, as far as that, you know, topic goes so yeah so I, I mean I really um I guess love helping and serving others and um you know hopefully I have that privilege to do that in our in our state government in uh, Tallahassee next year so I'm really excited about that yeah and, sure. and you, you you were just put on the ballot for that for that for running I, I just filed my paperwork so you can take a look at that on our Florida's campaign tracking system um, my website should be coming up soon but if you're interested in what I'm doing michaelangelohamilton.com um, by the way I'm a licensed insurance professional um, we can get into that maybe a little later but um, it's, a, it's a really um, amazing you know industry um, insurance is really what my professional career surrounds around um, and, you know, personal development and the mindset growth always been helping me along that journey. I, I always knew, like, when I was 16 years old, that I have to break out of my shell and continue to do that every single day if I want to go where I want to go and do what I want to do and help the people I want to help. So, yeah. So what made you go into entrepreneurship at the age of 16? Well, that's a really good question. I guess it really goes around like losing my father so young. Um, I lost my father when I was three years old, but um, my mom was always there for us. Can you, you know. tell us more about that, about your sure, dad? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So my father was uh, a doctor at Jackson Memorial Hospital, very well educated. Um, you know, he was uh, Jamaican um, um, on his side. His whole family side is Jamaican. He, he moved to this country and he worked hard and he like took his education very seriously. He got like a lot of different... Um, you know, steps along his professional career as far as the medical field goes. You know, he got his MD, he went through all the training, OBGYN. He did a lot of amazing things. And um, I, I remember good times with him when I was growing up. We'll be like, it was in the 2000s when the computers were starting to come out and they were kind of introducing it to us. And, 
and I was so young at the time, I remember being on his lap and like being on the computer and, and like sometimes I would delete the whole files or whatever. And that was like a whole fun time. But, you know, my mom's always like, hey, you should make sure he doesn't touch the computer anymore. So, yeah. So three years old, do you remember your dad? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing because a lot of kids kind of forget those things. So the fact that you were able to remember those memories, that must be really special for you. Yeah, no, no, definitely very special. Um, unfortunately, like the day he passed, like I knew it in my soul, like I felt like God was communicating with me um, because it was a weird story. So like I was sleeping. Um, I actually remember the whole incident when he um, had a cardiac arrest. Unfortunately, that's how he passed. He had a cardiac arrest. And we lived in Lehigh Acres at the time um, in, the, in the Fort Myers area, Florida. Um, go Lee Hikers and uh, go Fort Myers. I was born in Fort Myers, by the way. Um, moved to the Broward and Palm Beach County regions um, around five during that uh, journey. Um, we had to move back with family. And, and but yeah, so um, like remembering those times, yeah. So like I remember ha him having that heart, uh, cardiac arrest and um, he was in the hospital for I think a day or two. And then what happened was, like, I was sleeping or whatnot, and I felt it in my soul, like, I had to wake up my mom. And, like, literally, like, one hour or less, I don't know how long, she got a phone call. And, unfortunately, it was the phone call that he passed away in the hospital. So, um, you know, I kind of felt like God has always been protecting me and always been with me. And God's always a part of all of us. I love how you talk about having connection to a higher power and having that really help you as well. And and um, that's kind of where I'm at in my journey, too. I feel like God is always there with me. He's telling me what to do in my journey as well. Um, you know, so, yeah, no, I ran for Congress. It was the youngest um, person ever in modern American history. It hasn't been done for over 100 years to run at 22 or 23 years old. And, and a lot of people were telling me, Michelangelo, um, why are you doing it? Why are you running for Congress? You're not going to win. I said, well, you know, it's up to the voters. It's up to the people. And the people have the choices that they want to have. And, and um, I, I'm really uh, proud of that a professional accomplishment in my career. And, and I'm really um, excited uh, to have this new opportunity that God showed me and presented to me. And I said, I have to, you know, be involved and continue to move on. And along that journey, you know, people were telling me, Michael you're so eloquent. You know, you're going to do great things. You should, you should run for state representative instead. And I said, okay, you know, that's a good idea. Let me go ahead and humble myself and get started and let's go. <laughs> let's help people. That, that is so great. So what difference do you think you could make that's, um, than other people have made? What, what are you like so passionate about changing in the world? Definitely. Um, so as far as like changes in our entire world, I feel like we need to have more positivity, um, a really heavy emphasis on personal development. I think that's so, so critical. Um, if we don't have that in our world or have that like being talked about right now, that's not being talked about in mainstream media or anything at all. It's everything is just to try to divide us in, in, in our country. And I, I don't think that is a sustainable path for for our country and we need to have national unity and get past this phase of uh, divisiveness hopefully that will occur in my lifetime that we kind of get past the divisiveness um, but yeah no I feel like that's the most important thing for me but also to come with compromises you know and and uh, in our district you know I don't want to get too involved in the political mm -hmm. <laughs> aspect of it but in in this district you know um, we, there's a lot of Democrats and a lot of Republicans, and I feel like, you know, the general viewpoints of our district is to make sure that we have someone who's going to represent all of our community, um, no matter what income level or bracket or where you come from or what, what's your last name or, or anything, who's going to do the job of all those voters and, and really navigate that process eloquently for them and, and um, make sure that we're doing the good of all the people, not just... Um, the super campaign donors who kind of really fund all these political candidates. I'm a grassroots candidate, um, you know, kind of pull myself up by the bootstraps type of person. So I'm always trying to make something happen. And um, I'm so grateful for being here and having the opportunity to speak with you here today. That, that's really cool, Michael. It's very inspiring. And, you know, I don't remember anything when I was three years old. So for me to hear that you remember your dad like that and you were so connected to God and had that intuition, it's amazing. I just wanted to go back to that because that was really um, pretty incredible to be so insightful and so young, you know? Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate it's it. very, thank very, you, very you. cool. So you definitely have some really special gifts inside of you, and I love that you're stepping into them. Now, I want to talk more about your journey 
Mm -hmm. and how you started with personal development because yeah, yeah. you told me around 19 years old you found personal development um, and how has it changed your life? It changed my life. That's a really, really good question. She has all the great questions, man. Um, so personal development I found at 19. So from the age of basically 16 to 19, I was in entrepreneurship kind of by myself, you know, kind of really just working, working, working. And, um, you know, going to college during the process, go to Florida Atlantic University, by the way, graduated bachelor's of political science in 2022 in our district. Love, love FAU, go FAU. Um, Got to promote them. Um, so um, to go back to your question as far as um, how did I find personal development at 19? I was um, on YouTube and um, I see an advertisement from this, cra cra this crazy guy and, and I'm like, wow, this guy has it all, man. He has the jet, he has, he has uh, his wife and, and he's doing some interesting stuff and you know, he, his vibe and frequency kind of vibes of my like natural you know, energy, and I was like, oh, this is cool, so let me click on it, it was, his name is Grant Cardone, yeah, I'm sure you've heard of him, the 10X rule, the 10X movement, and I've met, um, met you through kind of that as well, you know, I met Christina Critton, um, she used to live here, she lives in Miami now, but um, she, you know, it, I got introduced to her, and then I got introduced to you, and it, it's, it's kind of evolved into a lot of meaningful connections, and opportunities for growth and and I'm going to be quite frankly honest with you I think that's what's going to propel me to to this election we'll see what happens in August but I think um, being involved in that movement and meeting all those amazing people and making those connections is, is like priceless compared to what I've done in the past and what I've done in the past is you know some Times you don't meet the same type of energy out there, the same people with that energy or that mindset, or you know, it, it gets tough, you know, because like some people just want to kind of bring you down, and um, so it's important to have people who elevate you up. So, a hundred percent. So, tell us, share with us how personal development and doing the ten x work. How has that changed your life? What did you learn from that you, that you didn't know before? Well, um, I definitely learned that you have to, you know, put yourself out there. Um, you know, networking was a really, really important integral part of it. But um, some of the nuggets that I kind of took away from the movement was um, if you're not first or last. Um, I love that. I love that phrase because if you don't, like, put yourself out there, if you don't um, do whatever you need to do first, whatever that may mean for you, um, someone else will. <laughs> someone else in this world or, you know, universe will. So um, if you have the idea, speed to market's another important thing I've learned with Grant. Um, you know, getting your idea from your head to actual reality and physical reality is so, so important. Um, so I've done that. I have a company called Rising Gen Z Enterprises. It's focused on uh, personal development. It's a technology company that we're going to be building out in 2025 more. And I'm looking forward to that opportunity and kind of grow that out after. I'm, I'm someone who likes to focus on one thing at a time. So my main focus right now is to win this election and serve the people of, uh, our, of our district and of our state and hopefully our nation one day. And, and that's just kind of a trademark uh, company I have sitting. And, and we're going to do amazing things with it, I'm sure. And, and um, I, I, what will be the next question? <laughs> I, I, I love talking. I love talking. So... I kind of get lost sometimes with the question. Oh, no, no, it's, it's great. I love that, um, you know. So you, you said, where did you learn the phrase, shoot for the moon, because you just might land on the stars? Is that something you oh, learned from yes. Grant Cardone? Yes, I remember it. It was at a um, growth conference. I don't remember the speaker, unfortunately. I think it was Pitbull. Um, he was um, at our at the growth conference in Miami. I think it was 2021. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I remember sitting in my seat, and he said, you know, that phrase, that exact phrase, you know, sh if you shoot for the moon, you might land among the stars. And that's what I've taken in my personal journey and personal development um, as far as what I want to do with my professional career. I said, you know, I might not make it to, to Washington today, but I might make it one day and I might land among the stars, which would hopefully be our Florida house seat. Um, so, yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I love that phrase. It's one of the phrases I kind of live by as well. It's a lot of different, you know, phrases and and um, information I've learned along the journey that you know kind of helped me grow. Because I, I, when I think about it, going back from being 24 to looking back to 19, if I didn't take the initiative to click on that ad or like, because something told me, like God put it in front of me, I felt like, you know, because 
like, you know, if it wasn't for him, I probably would have just kept going down the same journey of just working, 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 not really looking towards, you know, personal growth. I mean, I might have found it out later in life, probably. But, you know, having it so early at a young age when I was just starting out in college was so, so critical. Why is personal growth so important for everybody? Like, why do you think it's something that part of you politically even want to bring more into the world? Why are we stealing from our young youth if they don't have personal development? Why, why, why mm -hmm. is it so important? Well, it's, um, it's really, really important because if we don't have that as a part of our natural, you know, daily habits, mm -hmm. um, we kind of get stuck into, like, I guess the nine to five mindset, which um, I do have a nine to five. I, you know, work, that's another thing Grant taught me, work is a blessing. I'm actually going through something right now with, uh, I, in the insurance industry. Um, remember, let me, let me give another nugget here. Um, make sure you, when someone says something, that the contract actually says what they say they're gonna do. Um, so I'm really navigating that. It's a company owned by United Healthcare, and hopefully we'll settle that out so I can move on in my insurance career. But um, long story short, with that deal, um, basically they told me I was independent in the insurance space. You're, you can do what you want, go wherever you want to go. So my plan was, okay, let me go take my Medicare side of my insurance license. Let me go do a W-2 job, get my 401k, get my you know salary, or you know hourly slash salary plus commission. And let me go and, um, you know, build my business for under 65 for the Affordable Care Act. Let me market myself. You know, I've marketed to over um, 10,000 people here in our district. I'm really proud about the 30-second ad I put out on TV. And um, that's a really cool thing that I did. I love it. I love the ad. And, and, and by the way, that company, by the way, wanted to show me $200 for an ad. And I said, no, I'm going to brand myself in this deal because I don't like, you know, paying that $200 or just the idea of, um, you know, giving them all the credit because then you can't really do much with the lead once you own it. You own it. So, um, yeah, I mean, um, but, but does why that is make personal, sense? But why is mm -hmm. personal development so important for success? Why do you see mm -hmm. it as so important? Like what? What tools do we get from personal development? What have you gotten in your life that you think like everybody needs to have personal development in their life? That's a good. That's a really good question. Um, without personal development, I feel like you know you don't have an opportunity to grow and be successful. I mean, you know, if you continue to learn and apply yourself, read books, or at least show up to different opportunities, like the opportunity to be here with you today, um, you know, you're not going to be able to kind of continue to grow and, and put yourself out there and and to be um, elevating in your professional, personal career or personal life and whatever you want to take that and, and apply it to. So, um, you know, it's really important that we have, you know, personal growth the mindset. Um, our mindset is um, an amazing organization, by the way, that I'm a part of. Um, I've met him actually through Grant and Clubhouse um, in 2021. Um, so technically speaking, like if I didn't meet Grant through the tax I wouldn't have met all these famous people. I have Heather John responding to my DMs, you know, Damon John reading my DMs now. So it's, it's really cool to kind of see it, like, grow over time, like myself, and, and I'm at a point where there's a little bit more credibility that I have in the marketplace, um, and I'm hopefully going to continue to grow that credibility, um, being able to serve, hopefully, in our, in our state house um, in Tallahassee. But yeah, you know, personal growth is so, so important. And, um, you know, Manny Fernandez, shout out to Manny Fernandez with uh, our mindset. He is a Silicon Valley angel investor from California, amazing guy. Um, you know, he's been on CNBC, investor, and successful companies like Dropbox. And, you know, he's been a really cool guy to kind of know over these years and been a part of his um, online, you know, Clubhouse events whenever I can, of course. And, Some people don't yeah. know what Clubhouse is. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I think they don't know. So Clubhouse is an audio app where you talk to people from all over the world, and it used to be a place where a lot of people used to connect and used to connect with celebrities and all kinds of people. So you can actually download the app into your phone, and uh, it's kind of changed. It's not, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not as, as, I think it changed. It's not, the connections are not as strong as they used to be. But I still have a room on there, and I still bring people together. And a lot of those people you were speaking with, um, you made the connections there with them. Yeah, yeah, no, I love her clubhouse rooms too. Whenever I have a chance and opportunity to join, it's all about you know healing and personal growth, and and I love hearing that too. I love hearing that too, and and um, 
I, I, I like Clubhouse, you know, it's an amazing app. I, I, I appreciate you like, you know, mm-hmm. going into it because it's true. Some people don't know what it is. And, yeah. and um, you know, that was like a really important opportunity for me because um, without Clubhouse, I wouldn't have been able to connect with some of the people I've connected with. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's, you, you show up and, and, and the universe will present those opportunities to you. Yeah, and how important has it, be, it been for you to be consistent in your life? Because we were talking about consistency uh, and never giving up, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely um, right now in my professional career, that's kind of my mindset of never giving up. Um, I'm going to continue to grow and elevate and um, you know, learn new things and, and apply for um, different lessons that I've learned over the last six, eight years. And um, you know, my mindset is um, hopefully... Uh, he doesn't watch this, but my mindset is I'm coming for someone's job in Congress in six years. So, you know, I'm never giving up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know. And, and you know what? It's uh, people have to take turns. It's not. Yeah. Uh, things yeah, change, right? We were that's talking true. about change and change, even changing your own career path, changing your own direction. How important has change been to you not to stay on the same path, you know, oh, yeah. to be able to change direction? How has that worked into your life? Oh, I totally agree with you. If, if you stay complacent, um, you will be punished for being complacent. Um, you know, it's it's so important to continue to look for new changes because change is a good thing. Change is something that can be a positive um, benefit and factor in your life. And if, you know, you're not really focused on um, changing for the better, you know, we all want to change for the better, of course. <laughs> so, you know, if we, if we don't really focus on changing for the better, we'll, we'll be st- you know, staying where we're at, if not going backwards. And and another key nugget that I always tell my followers, um, around ni- 2019, I came up with this phrase, or 2020 is um, going forward is the only direction you need to look. So like, you know, looking backwards, you know, you shouldn't really try to look backwards. It's always good. You could look backwards to kind of know where you were and everything, but like you shouldn't always be stuck in the past. You should look towards the future and, and and um, like I've always had the mindset, even before meeting Grant or anything, like because I always knew I wanted to be a member of Congress one day. I know that's what God wanted me to do. Um, so like uh, I had a mindset. Okay, well, how so- how old I could how what's the youngest age you could be a member of Congress? Because I remember at that age, at 16, I was like, I want to do it. And I'm like, oh, let me be realistic. I don't have the money or this or that. I'm like, oh, okay. And that's when I supported someone else who ran for Congress. So important to like support other people on you know the journey. And and I, I met um, Tim Canova, who's an amazing professor in Nova Southeastern University to this day, and in, in the um, former 23rd district, which is now the 25th. And and I volunteered on a lot of people's campaigns and stuff like that. So I met a lot of different people, and uh, it was a very interesting process, very interesting election. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, so hopefully, uh, let me let me get back where we were. Like, I kind of get lost in these questions sometimes. No, no, that's great. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your mom because I know that you oh, love yeah. your mom very much. And how Im- important definitely. has your mom been in your life to help you really grow and develop yourself? That's a really good question. So um, she's been a very, very integral part of my life. Um, she's been my support system um, from day one. Um, from giving birth really you know and she my dad's always been there too but he's always had that like I I get it from my dad I feel like with the big mindset he wanted to help people he was a doctor he wanted to open up his own practice as far as like like he was always doing entrepreneurial things and it runs in that side of the family because his mother was um, a hairstylist and she did hair salon services for a lot of famous people sometimes i would hear sometimes something about jay-z or beyonce i don't remember the full story because unfortunately you know that side of my family we don't really communicate much today maybe one day we will hopefully uh we'll see um but yeah yeah so so I, it comes from that side of the family i feel like as far as like the business mindset and and um, personal growth and development a little bit i kind of get it from him mainly maybe you skipped uh, some people <laughs> but you know that's why I'm here like that's my purpose to kind of um, be there for my immediate family I have an older sister she's um, three years older than me and my mom's been a really integral part of it and you know she sacrificed her sales career to kind of make sure that we didn't go down the wrong path because unfortunately a lot of people in my situation or what well what situation you know kind of end up the statistics unfortunately in the wrong path they end up you know going to 
um, through the criminal justice system or they wind up in gangs or you know things of that nature and unfortunately well fortunately I you know I kind of had my mom kind of you know be there for us and and, the, and some of our media family as well on my mom's side was there for us and and um, I'm here today I'm here today to make something happen for a lot of people so um, yeah that, that's great that I think it's so important to have that foundation of, of a mom that really is there for you and you know, it's like your biggest cheerleader in life. Um, and to have the extended family as well, it's just that support system gets you to really grow yourself into the person that you're meant to be, you know? Because you have that strong core, that strong foundation. You're not growing up, you know, so many kids grow up where, you know, and especially being without a dad, right? No, definitely. I mean, yeah. they needed that even stronger foundation. And, you know, these days there's so many, you know, families that don't have that strong foundation. You know, so many kids that are lost in life. And the fact that I think you're so focused has been that your mom has poured so much love into you. Yeah, no, definitely. She's poured so much into me. And um, that's one of the things I want to do in my professional career. I want to give back eventually. That's why I have uh, my uh, corporation. And we're going to like um, help a lot of people. My whole vision and dream is to eventually um, you know, have a lot of famous people through this uh, technology platform and make a lot of money with it. And Hope a lot of other people make a lot of money with it. One day I want to ring the bell on the New York Stock Exchange, so we'll see what happens in a few years. So that would be real fun. That would be amazing. So tell me about the technology. What is it exactly? What's that platform? Are you able to share that? Um, I'll share a little bit about it. So um, the concept is basically to to you know connect um, you know our young people in our generation to you know, have personal growth, personal development as a part of their life and have access to people that they wouldn't usually have access to. Um, so if you're interested, uh, Rising Gen Z is on Instagram and you can look that up here today and um, be a part of it if you're a part of Gen Z or not. You know, if you want to help or support or invest, uh, we'll have opportunities, I'm sure, in the near future for investments and, and um, you know, fundraising as far as that goes as well. Yeah, I love you. I love that passion that you have to help others. And do you think that's your biggest drive is like helping others and making it easier for others to connect on the journey? Um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I feel like that's definitely a big motivator for me as far as like personal growth and development. I love seeing other people succeed. And um, I always want to kind of break through um, you know, the situations and challenges that I ha I've had and have uh, or currently am going through in, in my personal life as well. And, and um, you know, being part of the 10X community and, and being a part of all of the different opportunities, I feel like it's going to elevate me to where my natural uh, purpose is supposed to be at, <laughs> basically. Because as far as if we're talking about the political landscape, there is no friend in politics. <laughs> So unfortunately, you know, sometimes you have people who say they will support you, but then really don't. Um, so that's fun. <laughs> if you had to talk to our audience right now and tell yeah. them um, that you're asking for their support, what would you say to them? That's a really good question. Um, so if you live in Florida's 91st congressional, oh, well, not congressional, house district, state house. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going a little too far. I'm going a little too far. Um, if you live in Florida's 91st House District, it's anywhere from West Boca to the city of Boca Raton, basically. It's, it, the lines were redrawn in 2020, so it's a different makeup. Um, so, you know, it's an R1, 2, plus 3 district, and which I would be able to navigate and kind of be able to be that. I would view the role as a referee um, in many of those instances and circumstances. and and be able to put things on the floor that the people would want and, and, and support. Like, for example, I feel like we would like to have um, lower taxes, you know, property taxes, or at least keep the property taxes the same. But I, when I, I'm not going to make a promise I can't keep, so I'll keep it real with you guys. Uh, you know, I'm just one member of the house, you know. There's only so much I can do, but that's the mindset I'm willing to provide for you of um, where I kind of view governance. I, I believe good governance is uh, coming up with equitable solutions for all parties involved in the, in the, in the deal or in the transaction um, in anything in life, in business or politics. Um, so that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll work for you, the people, the people of um, the great state of Florida, the people of our district, and hopefully the people of our nation. So um, that, is, that is what I'll do. I'll make sure we get things done. 
That is great. That's what we need. We need people to get things done. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if they're Republican or Democrat. They got to get things done. You yes. Know, and yes. work for yes. the people. So, uh, you know, I hope you're listening and I hope you vote for Michael um, Angelo Hamilton. I love that last name. Thank you. Thank um, you. That's really cool. That's a cool name. Is that the name you were born with? Yes, it is. That is so it's my purpose. I'm like, I was born with the name Hamilton, too. So I was like, yeah. man, this is something I definitely should do. <laughs> A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So and Michelangelo, that was my birth name too, my first name. Yeah, yeah. So did, you know, I want to get back to your connection with God, mm -hmm. um, because you say that God is very present in your life. You're very intuitive to God. Do you feel like that's your big purpose in life is to serve on the Congress and to make a difference in the world? Is that what you feel God is guiding you to do? Yeah, no, definitely. I, I feel like God is definitely telling me um, eventually that will be my place in life and eventually, you know, to elevate even higher than that. Um, I mean, I've seen opportunities or potentially I can be on a presidential ticket in the next 10, 10 15 years when I'm 35. So mm -hmm. the next 10 years are going to be really exciting, really interesting. Um, because I, I'm around people who say they want to run for run for president, and so in my mind, I'm like, I'll be your vice presidential candidate, <laughs> and we'll get we'll get America working great, and then we'll, we'll get America to to a place, um, hopefully, if, if not by then, uh, to a really amazing place where we we end in this divisiveness that's hurting our people so much. Um, so, to kind of go back to your question, you mind? Um, Going, um, re repeating your question first. Yeah, I was, I was just asking you as far as like, you know, when you knew like God, like does God talk to you? Do you feel like, how do you get the messages that you know, like this is what I want to do with my life. This is, you know, this is my direction. Like you were talking just now about possibly being a vice president or a president. I mean, that's very ambitious and incredible. So I wanted to, you to also ask the audience um, you do need their support, and you also need financial support, too. So how that's important true, is it true. for you to have the financial support to be able to live your dream, to be able to make a difference in the world, to be able to bring more self-development to, to people and to the world? Because I do think, myself, that that is the inner work that we do on ourselves, self-development, the place where we believe in ourselves, we love ourselves, you know, um, we know that we're capable. Um, we know that we look at things in a positive mindset, in a positive way, right? Um, I think yeah, all those true. things come into personal development, right? Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, right? Dr. Wayne Dyer, he says that, mm -hmm. and it's so true. And I feel that personal development gives people that, that change of glasses to see life from a different perspective, right? Mm. Not from the same perspective yep. that they maybe were seeing it from. And that's what I think is really needed in this country. And of course, the unity as well, you know? And so um, what will it take for you? Like what kind of support do you need to get to where you want to go in your life? That's, that's, thank you so much for that question. Um, I definitely agree. Right now, I filed my paperwork with the state of Florida, so they're currently processing that, and they actually put me up on the website. So my opponent might be like, oh, no, man, I didn't know I had a primary opponent. <laughs> like, because a lot of times, you know, people don't run in the primaries, and it's sad, unfortunately. You know, our, our democracy has to be robust. We have to have people engaged, involved, and, and have the people decide. Um, now, to get to that point in my career, um, right now, um, I'm going to be having my campaign website up, um, which also requires the state of Florida to kind of process um, the filings so I can go to the, my credit union, open up the campaign account for the political uh, campaign. However, if you're interested in supporting my journey, you can go to michaelangelhamilton.com. If you're interested in insurance, you can book an appointment. I would recommend you book it a month away from now <laughs> so I could settle out whatever needs to be settled out. and. And uh, with uh, with that company, uh, you know, well, you we read, didn't, we read didn't, your contract. We didn't <laughs> talk. We didn't talk about insurance. So tell us about your insurance, because that's something that you want people to know that you do currently. Yeah. So tell us about what you do with insurance. So like with, um, you know, most importantly, um, I start out with life insurance because I saw the immediate need you know, from me losing my father at such a young age. You know, I've helped people uh, obtain coverage. Mm -hmm. Term life coverage um, is kind of my primary product in in that space and. Then from there, I've done the Medicare Advantage space. It's a big field. There's a lot of people turning 65, a lot of companies, tech companies. And I've worked at um, about two or three different um, places. I worked for Cigna. 
that I worked for, um, Together Health. Um, they were a really big company. Um, I had the opportunity to do that while I was in college. I was really, really working over overtime, man. <laughs> Go FAU. But, uh, you know, I did that, navigated that, and then um, I kind of landed at this um, second position I'm at right now, and they've been really grateful, uh, gracious to kind of work with me with my former FMO who's kind of been um, – unfortunately not that nice in this situation but um because basically i'm going to give you a, a tip of business in life like in the insurance space if you you know what i'm talking about is chargebacks so let's say you enroll a client unfortunately they cancel and if you don't manage the book and that's the lesson i learned you got to have to manage my book of business better um so i'll take personal ownership and responsibility of that i didn't you know manage the book better and you know some of the clients fell off so um, but it was a horrible decision I was in because like it didn't align with where I wanted it what I wanted to do um, so the options for me personally in that decision were a to either stay in the brokerage and you know really not kind of go where I want to go and do what I want to do <laughs> or B um, bite the bullet leave the brokerage and um, in the contract in the bottom of the page it says it's payable and full and due and um, you know, you gotta, that, that's why I should join law school in, in my professional career because you know we need people standing up for others and working through those interesting legal mumbo how, how jumbos. You, but, but yeah, and we all have challenges. Like seriously, who has not? We all have something to deal with. So that's okay. Sure. That's going to be yeah. your challenge right now to deal with. But really, you're here to help people with insurance. So what do you want people to know? What can you help them with? You can help them with life insurance. What else can you help them with? So my primary products are life insurance, health insurance, um, Obamacare, um, Affordable Care Act health exchanges, um, supplemental coverage like dental, vision, hearing, ancillary products. Right now, um, everything's kind of paused because like that's really holding up my appointments. So I used to be appointed with Anthem Blue Cross, United Healthcare, um, Cigna, just to name a few of those. Why does it take? Carriers. Why does it take so long to get an appointment with you? You say it takes about a month. Um, to get an appointment with me, yeah, right now it's probably a month because um, it's a lot of legal back and forth, and I, I, you know, we're just trying to negotiate it to get it settled out. So basically, I have to pay the brokerage back. Over, in my mindset, you know, if they're watching over the next 20 years, and I'll definitely pay you back, you know. So you should take that. And I have active clients that are paying residual income, so um, they should, you know, definitely take the deal. Man. But, but yeah, so once that's all, you know, nicely, um, you know, out of my purview, um, I'll be able to help people again and be able to help them with their policies and be able okay, to Okay, so it's paused coverage. right now. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. I thought, like, you're so booked up. I'm like, that's great. You're so booked up, but you hit a little challenge, which we yeah. all hit challenges in life, but you're committed to helping people and making a difference with people, and that's so important, you know? Yep. And thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that. Oh, thank because you. you know what? That's how we learn, right? We, we gotta learn. read the fine print, the fine lines, and things. Because you know, sometimes, and, and, and it's good to have lawyers look over contracts, you know. Yeah. And that's what I've learned too. Even in buying a house, you have to have, you know, definitely a lawyer look at things, especially when it's something important, um, because they could put so many things in the in the fine print. Oh and, yeah. And we're not we're not lawyers. None oh, of yeah. us are lawyers. So yeah. that's a good lesson to have learned and taken to your life, right? No, definitely. Even in um, even in the new paperwork they're giving me when I want to move over to the next brokerage, and they said, "Oh, you have to sign this paperwork, Michelangelo." So I'm looking at it. The first paragraph says, "You are releasing the company from financial obligations to pay you on anything you've basically written." I'm like, "Oh, okay. That means I'm not signing it right now." <laughs> like I'm like, you know, this means that like any client I wrote, you're not going to pay me on if I decide to move. So I'm like, okay. Because, you know, that's interesting. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm really excited. I had the privilege and opportunity to serve thousands of different clients in, over my professional career, either as an employee or um, entrepreneur in the insurance space. Um, thousands of people in the customer service space industry. And and um, in general, if you look at the whole professional career, probably close, talk to close to probably 5,000 people. That's amazing. So how yeah. many years have you been doing this for? Um, all in all, since I was 16. And like, it was so funny, like they were like, oh, you have to be an adult. I'm like, yeah, okay. Let's see if they notice. <laughs> that, yeah. is am that is amazing. Yeah. I can connect you with some great people. Oh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that appreciate are in that business that maybe, you know, you'll see, can show you some stuff. Thank They've been you, doing it 
for a long time. So that's amazing. So I'm sure you'll get yourself back on track. I but will. you're on a new track right now to get into Congress. Um, you know, so it's all good. Everything is kind of like it's how life is, right? It can be messy. It can be, you know, there's all kinds of stuff. But we got to stay grateful and we got to keep moving forward, like you said, and uh, stay positive. Because Don't no play. matter what, you know, everything works out at the end. A year from now, you're going to look at this and it's going to be like, you're going to laugh at it. It was yep, like, okay, yep. it was a challenge. I got through it. I learned from it. I became stronger, better, you know, more capable from this situation. So it's all, it's all great. So um, I want to thank you so much for being my guest today. It was so great to have you on the World Healing Tour podcast. Michael, how can people find you, connect with you, support you? Um, please share. No, definitely. I appreciate you being here. Um, you can definitely connect with me on social media, Michelangelo Hamilton, real Michelangelo Hamilton on Instagram. Um, you can find and Google me. I'll be accessible on my website, MichelangeloHamilton.com. You can book a call um, if you want to talk or if you need help with the insurance. Um, you can definitely book a call with, with that as well. We just realize the situation I'm in <laughs> right now. And, um, you know, if you're interested in voting or supporting me in this election, and um, if you live in the district and you're watching this, or if you have any questions or an anything, you know, you can access me at any time at those numbers as well. So um, really appreciate you having me. I really appreciate you being a really great, um, you know, personal connection and friend during this journey for me. And and um, God is great, and God is going to, you know, help all of us uh, achieve our personal goals and journey. He's there for all of us. So, you know, show up, and uh, everything happens for a reason. I really do believe that. Oh, I love that. And, you know, Michael, I had a smile on my face the whole time I was talking to you because your energy, you're just, like, a really positive, and you have such, like, good energy. You're so sweet. Like, you feel oh, it. Thank you. Yeah, thank I do feel that when I'm around you. Like, you just have really, you exude really positive energy. And I love that you're so young and you're so determined to not let things get in your way. And I love that you shared vulnerably, you know, th challenges that you're going through because we all have challenges. And if anybody sits here and thinks like, oh, you know, or judges it, it doesn't really matter because, you know, they're judging themselves. You know, what people do has nothing to do with you or with me or with anything, right? We have to keep believing in ourselves, loving ourselves. And, you know, even the obstacles are a gift. Everything's a gift, right? Everything's a gift, so, yeah. so thank you for so much for being my guest. I so enjoyed having you on the podcast today. Thank you, Nod. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us today. It's been such an honor. Um, till next time, remember to have a grateful heart, to ground in love and compassion, and know every day that you are being guided by God. Have a beautiful week, everyone, and keep being positive. Namaste.